You're still watching where is now September 11, often referred to as 9-11, saw a series of four coordinated terrorist attacks by the Islamic terrorist group Al-Qaeda against the United States on the morning of Tuesday, September 11, 2001. The attack resulted in 2,977 fatalities, over 25,000 injuries, and substantial long-term health consequences, in addition to at least 10 billion infrastructure and property damage. 9-11 is the single deadliest terrorist attack in human history and the single deadliest incident for firefighters and law enforcement officers in the history of the United States, with 343 and 72 killed, respectively. Where were you on September 11, 2001? I, I remember this moment so eerily. Mm -hmm. I was standing in my living room. Um, of course, it was close to the time where we were going back to school. I was in uni then. Um, and I was just about to leave the house. I was going to rush to see my mom at work and then go shopping to get stuff for school. And I, I literally, you know when you're walking out the door and you forget to turn off the t TV? And then I turned around and I saw a building on, on fire. And I thought, oh, what's going on? So I'm walking to the TV to turn it off, and then I see World Trade Centers. And so I turned up the volume, and I was standing there in shock. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, you're like, mm -hmm. Mom, can you, what, can you see the news? Mm. Can you see what's happening? It actually took me a few minutes to process that. My sister worked in New York. Yeah. A few does that ah, from there. My mother so went there. <laughs> I, I, I literally was like in a state of confusion. Can I reach her? I can't reach her. And all the phone lines were. It was crazy. Yeah. It so was. to think that, you know, how many years later where mm -hmm. it's just. Yeah. Well, I can vividly remember that I was in front of my TV. Uh, TV I, too. <laughs> yes. I, I really didn't think I had, um, I had anyone in mind then to call because I think at that time I didn't know anyone that was living in New York, but I could still remember how the news shook the world. Mm -hmm. But most especially, do you know what I admire about this? The fact that they kept that fire alive. Like, we all know about 9-11. Mm -hmm. You can't forget about 9-11. Mm -hmm. So even if you hear, when you hear 9-11, that's the first, first thing, thing that, that comes, comes to mind. Yeah. And, and I can't even remember the year we had the civil war or oh, in Nigeria. All those yeah. dates. And it's, it goes back to what's happening with our history, which is another topic for, <laughs> for another, another day. day. You know, you know, in Benin land, everybody has a one, one brother or sibling abroad. So mm. like half of my mom's sibling or more than half of them actually live in New York. Yeah. So she was going crazy, Frantic. you know. But thankfully, you know, no one got hurt. But one of my uncles actually worked very close mm -hmm. too. Wow. So mm -hmm. thank God nobody got hurt. Right, so what did we find in the news? Okay, Uti, I think you should take your story first. Um, okay, so my story is, so I'll take the headline. The headline says, Buhari directs CBN to suspend Forex for food items and fertilizer. So the story says he's directed the CBN not to provide Forex for the importation of food items or um, fertilizer. And this is on the back of obviously the foreign exchange issues mm -hmm. that we're currently having. Um, and he's urging um, private businesses bent on food importation to source their foreign exchange. Now, a couple of reasons why this story stood out for me. Um, first of all, it talked about, so when I saw the headline, I thought, fertilizer, why would you want to stop that? Um, and it talks about the fact that they've increased the fertilizer production plants from three in the whole country to 33. So for that reason, they won't pay a cobble to import fertilizer. And then um, also the fact that uh, they will not also give our foreign exchange to people to bring in compromised food items um, to divest the effort of our farmers. Now, I'm getting very sick and tired of this strategy where we want to force something to happen locally, so we shut the doors. Mm. It's very myopic to use colloquial terms. It's, it's really, really frustrating. Now, do we have engagement with stakeholders? It's fantastic that we've grown our fertilizer capacity, but I shudder to think that 33 <laughs> plants can solve the problems of the you know entire country. <laughs> you know, so in, exactly. So to you could probably tell us a bit more is that. no joke. Exactly. I mean, my husband, it was a day he was on the phone with the, with the company, literally screaming, I paid you since a week ago. Blah, blah, blah. You know, so the, 
it's very compared to the number of farmers in town, it's very epileptic. Exactly. Yeah. And then when he talks about in the story as well, he talks about agriculture being the future for our young people. I absolutely agree that there's a lot we've allowed our agriculture sector to suffer. Mm. And yes, we should inject youth and, and all of that Definitely. into it. But then the, it takes time. And the reality of it is even in the Western world where all these supply chains and things work, right. they still import food. You will have to accept that there are certain things that you don't produce. You will have to accept that your populace cannot be forced to eat the, only the things that you produce. And what you then do is you increase the price and you make life more difficult. So I would like to see a lot more engagement around these strategies. Till today, there isn't one car. Mm -hmm. I can count how many times I've seen that local Nigerian brand that right. won't mention yeah. the name. On the road mm. and you've made cars incredibly expensive mm -hmm. so can we please be more creative and i think this story is in line with a lot with, with our, our topic, our for topic today. yeah exactly. Exactly. that's what i was going to say that we're going to we're yeah. going to, touch, going to just quickly, touch on that because we're running out of time okay so my story is taken from the guardian and it's dr strike so fg approves additional 8.9 billion for june covid 19 hazard allowance okay and I don't know if, you, if you're following the story about, obviously, doctors going on strike is not new in Nigeria. But if you've been following the recent trend, and you would see that on Monday, the National Association of Resident Doctors, again, and back to strike. And they have like three main points. One, the residency program is not adequately funded. Um, I think some agreements that they have, it all falls in the agreement that they have with the government. And then the most important one is that the insurance for the doctors treating COVID have not been implemented. Mm. So do they have a valid reason to go, for, on, this to go on this strike? Yes, Absolutely. mine is, do we always have to wait for doctors to reach this point, this breaking point? And then you see, yes, because I think like even the doctors were saying that that's the only language right now that, that the government understand. understands. Same thing with us. So why do we, why can't why we do look we for wait? a more constructive but, well, do you, and creative do you know way what to solve even, issues? Do you know what even baffles me when the statement um, they were making the statement about saying you have to replace them with core members and consultants are you not going to pay them won't there be an insurance for the people that are actually putting their lives on, uh, on, on the line. line for to treat this disease and what have we been doing with the covid 19 allocation can somebody produce a report for all of us to see where all this money the last time i heard was about is it billion or no, is it more? It's a more. lot more. That, that was the first influx of money. Probably. So, but so I mean, I, the funny thing there, just, just to add to that quickly, when it comes to the insurance, that insurance is actually mandatory. So the government who sets the law that says you must have um, group life policies for your... Uh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. My story is actually also tied to our topic for the day. It says 433,000 Nigerian businesses to get 50,000 and um, I think 30,000 Naira each. That's um, from Buhari's government. So according to the special assistant to the president, um, Tola Johnson on micro, small and medium um, enterprise says 100 small businesses will get at least 50,000 Naira each. This is supposed to be like um, a gesture in part of um, COVID-19 e economic stimulus. That's what how they put it. And he made the announcement during the inauguration and implementation of survival fund guaranteed uh, offtake stimulus scheme for the MSMEs on Thursday in Abuja. So when I saw this report, um, they said also, <laughs> food, okay, why are you laughing now? No, when finished. I saw this report, they said also, um, I think about 100,000 businesses as well, we'll go, we're going to um, go home with, I think, um, 30,000 Naira each. So the first statement, when, oh, sorry, at least 333,000 beneficiaries will get uh, a one-off 30,000 grant, you know, so <sighs> when immediately I said this thing, the next thing Uti says, okay, what will 30,000 Naira no, do? No, they want maybe to buy for, no, probably they will drive to buy. <laughs> because I don't even get, when he was saying small businesses, please, you should just, you should not even say micros, you should say, after the micros, the people before, so yeah. when you're trying to sell granite, you, can't, you, can't you know, it, or you yeah. want to fry a cara. Yes, you can give me 30,000 Naira. Even and how sustainable is that? You know what? We're going to take a break because that's our topic for today, <laughs> the ease of doing business in Nigeria. And we'll see you after the break. Please stay with us.